Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Tuesday, April 6, 2021. In accordance with the Board of Education's resolution approved at the March 10, 2020 board meeting, in the event of a medical or health emergency related to COVID-19, the board chair in consultation with Board chair in consultation with the vice chair and the superintendent may declare that a board meeting or a board committee meeting be held remotely in its entirety without the physical presence of board members subject to the establishment of a mechanism that would allow each board member the opportunity to fully participate in the meeting despite not being physically present. And that would allow the public to also remotely attend those portions of the meeting that are open pursuant to the Maryland Open Meetings Act by being able to listen and or view those portions of the meeting. As a result, today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Both committee members will say their names before making and seconding a motion, as well as in requesting discussion on an agenda item. Ms. Slade, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Jost. Yes. Mr. McMillian. Ms. Hen. Yes. Mr. Kuhn. Yes. Mr. Offerman. Yes. Thank you. Ms. Slade, please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting. Thank you. Dr. Williams. Dr. Boswell McComas. Present. Present. Thank you. Ms. Lagerman. Present. Mr. Dickerson. Ms. Howie. Ms. Rungfar Sangaroon. Here. Ms. Lowry. Dr. Scriven. Present. Dr. Wheatley Phillip. Present. Dr. Zarchin. Ms. Byers. I'm here. Thank you. Dr. Jones. Dr. Roberts. Present. Ms. Burnoff. Present. Mr. Corns. Present. Mr. Dixit. Present. Dr. Minus. Present. Mr. Patillo. Present. Mr. Saris. Present. Mr. Plate. Here. Dr. Grimm. Present. Ms. Levenstein. Present. Mr. Groff. Present. Ms. Piper. Present. Ms. Sanner. Present. If there are additional staff participating that were not mentioned, please state your name. Debbie Somerville. Thank you. Maria Lowry. Thank you. Hi, Dr. Barandozzi is present. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you all. Thank you, Ms. Slade. Ms. Saris, please state your name for the record and please proceed with uh, presenting contract number one. Thank you. Uh, this is this is George Saris, Executive Director of Fiscal Services. Our first item is a new cooperative administration of programs contract for a cohort in culturally responsive teacher leadership. Uh, the name is ARA 900-21 uh, Culturally Responsive Teacher Leaders of BCPS and this is a Master of Education program. Approval is requested for a three year, six month contract and contract spending authority of $180,000. Board members, is there any discussion? Go ahead, Mr. Kuhn. Thank you, Ms. Jose. Um, Mr. Saris, I, I have a general question 
because you you're bringing to us six seven cohorts uh, for education here. You brought us over five cohorts last time, um, and I'm I'm wondering, and I think what would probably be would serve the board uh, better would be um, to really understand the overall plan. To say we intend to educate X amount of people a year and provide master's pathways for them. And here are the listings and the options because we're literally just getting, oh, we want to teach 20 people this and 20 people that. And, and it's very, it's very splintered from my perspective. I don't know who can speak to this and owns it. Is it, is it Ms. Somerville? No, uh, this program is managed by uh, Department of Organizational Effectiveness, uh, or excuse me, the Division of Organizational Effectiveness. Um, and it is a an ongoing program with a constant budget, uh, which includes both cohorts and uh, individually uh, identified uh, classes that uh, teachers take under their contract, as well as uh, a smaller program for non-certificated employees. And the, if you would like a presentation on the entire program, that is probably something that Ms. Lagerman would be able to present uh, to the entire board. Uh, if not just the committee, if that's what the board uh, and the superintendent direct us to do. Or if you'd like, um, Debbie Piper from our office um, provided a nice overview last time. We are happy to do that around how things are selected if you'd like to do that now rather than adding it to a future agenda, but we're happy to do either whatever is most helpful at this juncture. Well, I, I appreciate that. It seems as if, you know, there's a significant number of these things flowing through. And um, maybe Mr. Saris, you could just kind of give a sketch out like the overall budget that we look at a year uh, for these items in general to kind of start from. And then, you know, I, I just want a base to understand. Okay. Um... So the entire program is uh, about $5.5 million and there is a portion of this program set aside for cohorts. And I wanna say it's about half of the total, which, uh, and Ms. Lagerman or Ms. Piper can correct me, I wanna say it's about 2.7 million of that five and a half million dollar total is the cohort budget. Does, can either of you correct me on that? Uh, hello, this is Debbie Piper. Uh, the annual mm -hmm. amount that we encumber for cohorts is approximately one million one hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars. The remaining uh, funds in the in the total budget that you just described, Mr. Saris, are reserved for tuition reimbursement for employees. Uh, we take a portion of that tuition reimbursement fund and allocate it to cohorts in order to ensure that we have programs that meet critical needs in the school system. That's why we bring the cohorts forward. And I'll just add, Mr. Kuhn, that on page 312, which is the last page of the budget, you'll see the three three lines uh, for cohorts, uh, self-directed study, which is listed as professional and classified employees, which are the non-certificated or non-instructional positions. And I think what uh, Ms. Piper was referring to are the the amount of new cohorts that we start each year because there are because these cohorts are multi year um, in each year you have uh, the second or third 
installment of a cohort that was started uh, two or three years ago. Right, it's that, it seems as if this is, so uh, Ms. Piper, you're saying that there's about a million dollars in spend in cohorts a year? Correct, we, we have ongoing cohorts that we are already encumbered uh, to pay for each year, but we always, as Mr. Sarris said, have a few that have ended, so that frees up uh, some of the budget capacity to start new cohorts, which are some of the ones that we're bringing this evening. Uh, and these cohorts enable us to meet critical shortage areas and the direct billing benefit that comes along with being a cohort member incentivizes employees to choose these programs and therefore become qualified to, to meet some of our critical areas of need. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, one last question. You had mentioned that uh, tuition reimbursement was the rest of the 5.5 million line item budget. Is that open to all employees or just teachers or are there limitations on that on that? A tuition reimbursement is a negotiated benefit. Uh, so uh, each bargaining unit uh, has that as part of their negotiated agreement. So the amounts of tuition reimbursement uh, depend upon each of the negotiated agreements with the bargaining units. So teachers in TABCO, yes, have uh, tuition reimbursement benefit, but so do employees represented by AFSME and ESPBC and CASE and OPE. Okay, and just to, to better understand that, and I don't want to go too far because we have 24 items here. <laughs> I'm hoping to knock out about seven with this discussion, <laughs> uh, is to really um, understand um, that benefit is, is really covered by that expenditure, right? So for instance, there's a pot of about $4 million above and beyond your cohorts that are, that are being applied and available to the, the various employees that we have. But is any of that, it, it's to be made available, but it's, is it available to everyone? So if every single one wanted to sit there and go back and get their masters at the same time, we, we wouldn't have enough funds for that, would we? I think I might need to defer that question uh, to those with more budgetary experience than I have, but I know that tuition reimbursement budget is intended to cover the tuition reimbursement of employees in all of the bargaining units. And I think that budget is based on historical expenditures. So there is some predictability around how much uh, will be requested from that budget annually. All right, yes, thank you. That's, that's correct. And the issue that, uh, or the factor that has caused us to adjust the budget most recently was when the per credit hour was raised from $250 to $300 as part of the negotiate labor negotiations. And at, at that point, the budget was increased, but uh, it's always been managed within, uh, within the allocation without, without any concerns. And, and we work with, the budget office works with uh, human resources and with organizational effectiveness to make sure that that we do manage the program, that the coursework in the cohorts is designed to uh, develop teachers from within the organization and and focus teachers and on to areas that that where we have recruitment uh, targets. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kuhn. Mr. Altman? Most of my concerns were, were already addressed, but I would like to see at some point a presentation on how the number of uh, possible uh, openings are for, uh, for, for, each, uh, for each cohort. But I don't, I, don't, I, don't, uh, I don't need that today. Thank you. Are there any other questions, board members? There being no further questions, we will proceed to contract number two. Mr. Saris, please proceed with presenting. Uh, thank you. This is ARA 901-21, Master of Arts in Leadership in Teaching English for Speakers of Other Languages. 
This is a new cooperative administration of programs contract for a cohort in leadership in teaching ESOL. Approvals requested for a four year, one month contract and contract spending authority of $216,000. Committee members, any discussion? There being no further questions, we will proceed to the next contract. Mr. Saros, please proceed. Yes, the next item, ARA 902-21, Master of Science in Nursing with a concentration in population-based care coordination. This is a new cooperative administration of programs contract for a, co a cohort in nursing with a concentration in population-based care coordination. Approval is requested for a four-year, one-month contract <clears throat> and contract spending authority of $216,000. Board members, any questions? There being no further questions, we will proceed to the next contract. Mr. Saris, please okay. proceed. Next item is ARA 903-21. Community Engagement and Leading School Change Post-Baccalaureate Certificate. This is a new Cooperative Administrations of Program contract for a cohort on community engagement and leading school change. Approval is requested for a one-year, four-month contract and contract spending authority of $72,000. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, we will proceed to the next one. Oh, go ahead, Mr. I've got a quick question. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm just looking at this. Mr. Um, Saris, could you just mention or, or point out how many people these will affect? Are, are they all 20? Because it seems like it says enrollment 20 teachers and specialists. Is that is that the same for every cohort we're looking at? Uh, that tends to be uh, yes, it is for this the role. Well. Yes. OK, great. And this is this is only one year. It's only what, 12 credits? Correct. Yes, this one is correct. 12 credits. OK, so all right. It's just a certification. It's not an actual degree. Correct. All right. Thank you. Committee members, any more questions? Hearing none, Mr. Saris, please proceed to con the next contract. Thank you. Right. Uh, ARA 904-21, Master of Science in Mathematics Education, Elementary Middle School Focus. Uh, this is the new Cooperative Administration of Programs contract for a cohort in mathematics education with an elementary and middle school focus. Approval is requested for a four-year, one-month contract and contract spending authority of $216,000. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, we will proceed to the next contract. Mr. Saris, please proceed. The next item, ARA 905-21, Master of Education in Special Education, Trauma-Informed Instruction. Uh, this is a new Cooperative Administration of Programs contract for a cohort in Master of Education in special education, trauma-informed instruction. This program prepares educators to recognize signs of trauma in children and know appropriate ways to respond, thus providing a solid foundation for students' social, emotional development, academic learning, and a safe school climate conducive to learning. Approval is requested for a four-year, one-month contract and contract spending authority of $216,000. Committee members, any discussion, questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contracts. Mrs. Saris, please proceed. Thank yes. you. ARA 906-21, Master of Arts in Education, Secondary Mathematics. This is the new Cooperative Administration of Programs contract for a cohort in Master of Arts in Education, Secondary Mathematics. Approval is requested for a four-year, three-month contract and contract spending authority of $216,000. Thank you, Mrs. Saris. Committee members, any questions? 
Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. Uh, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with presenting. Um, is, is I had the, the next one as excess workers compensation. Is that? Is that okay. Yeah. Um, that is KSH 359-18, excess workers compensation insurance. This contract modification will provide for continued the continued purchase of excess workers compensation insurance coverage for the Department of Human Resources operations. Approval is requested to extend the contract for one year and increase contract spending authority by $585,732, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $2,385,732 with one awarded vendor approved by the board in June 2018. Thank you, Mr. Saris. Mr. Kuhn, um, please go ahead. Uh, Mr. Saris, I see this is just a, a modification an extension of one year. Um, do organizations self-insure for uh, workers' compensation? Or are we too small for that? Uh, most smaller organizations purchase fully underwritten insurance. We are large enough uh, that we, like Baltimore County government, uh, are self-insured for workers' compensation. Uh, we have a budget that's approximately $8 million a year for that. Um, and this is a small portion by which we purchase, uh, we retain coverage of claims up to $600,000 each. And so like, uh, for instance, MAVE, our general liability and property insurance pool, which is a form of self-insurance as well, we purchase uh, excess coverage for those uh, exceptional and large claims that exceed six hundred thousand uh, dollars per claim so we are licensed and approved by the state of maryland to be self-insured and uh, they uh, grant that authority based in many ways on our size and ability to pay claims Thank you. Do we report like the number of claims and the spend on, on that line item that we have set aside for these types of claims anywhere? Uh, what's reported, for instance, in the budget is is just that. But in our financial statements, we report actual uh, expenses and we also uh, have done either an annual or biannual uh, external uh, actuarial report on our claims experience. Uh, and that experience is factored into the companies that bid on this excess insurance policy. OK, and just so that I'm clear, you just stated that we have an eight million dollar line item that covers um, these claims up to six hundred thousand dollars each and that we buy excess. Is there a limit on 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 this insurance coverage? Is there a limit to the amount that they cover? The excess policy itself? Um, yes, I don't know the exact amount. Yeah, I would have to re report back to the superintendent on that. OK, I'm just trying to understand it. Thank you for uh, for the insight. I wasn't aware until this very moment that we were self-insured. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Sarris. Uh, committee members, any more questions? Hearing none. Um, yeah, Ms. Jones, this is Ms. Hen. Go ahead, Ms. Hen. Thank you. Sorry, I put it in the chat. Um, Mr. Kuhn was asking along these lines. Good afternoon, Mr. Sarris. Um, do you happen to have offhand the amount that was paid in claims in excess of 600,000? 
for last I, year? I do not have that uh, report handy, but it's something we can provide to the superintendent. Okay, great. Um, would you happen to have a ballpark um, guesstimate on the number of claims that would fall into this category on any given year? In, in any given year, it would be fewer than five. And, and in some years, it might be very well be none. So I would say one or two a year might exceed. And one of the uh, assessments that we make when we sit down, when we would rebid this contract, would be to look at the number of those claims and compare uh, with this premium amount. And if, you know, in some years you're going to have no claims and your $585,000 will not have really been used. And in some years you might have two or $3 million even for one, you know, outstand one, one traumatic claim. And then of course, uh, the insurance more than pays for itself. But we have always felt the need to, to purchase this insurance just to protect ourselves from the very, you know, the possibility that there could be a traumatic or catastrophic claim that uh, we want protection from. Sure. So was that analysis performed prior to bringing this um, contract recommendation? Uh, I don't know the date of the last one. I want to say it was 20, 2019, but I'd have to check. Okay. I think it was at, yes, I wanted, yeah, 2019 should be is the last one that I have. Uh, this contract is actually managed uh, by human resources, so they might have more current information than I, but uh, that was the report that I located today. Okay, thank you. And this was originally, I see we're using a Carroll County um, government contract to procure um, this. So this was originally competitively bid by Carroll County? Yes. Okay. And we're extending it versus, versus rebidding. Do you know when, is it a one year option under Carroll County's? Oh yes, first of uh, This is the option. first of a two year option. Okay. And um, the insurance market has become somewhat volatile in the last year. And my feeling is that We'll probably exercise this option again next year, uh, just based on the quotes that we're seeing from our general liability insurance with MABE. So there's a lot of upward pressure on rates, and uh, we may not, we may want to exercise one more year of this option in 2022. Sure. Um, I don't know if anyone from, from HR is on the call that could provide any more specific information about claims paid under this contract. Is Ms. Lowry on? I, I am. Um, I don't have I don't have that information with me, but I can I can certainly get that to Dr. Williams. But I believe that um, Mr. Saris is correct in that um, 2019 um, was the the last year that it went up i'm sorry the, the last year that the it last year that it went out for bid yes okay i i had asked about the last time the analysis that he mentioned was performed um and i i believe yeah i believe we can get um that analysis but again, I think I I think it was 2019. Um, I'm trying to um, remember off the top of my head. I kind of remember when um, I wasn't working with that group at the time, but um, I kind of remember around the time that they um, were taking a look at this. I want to say it was in the spring of um, of 2019. But let let me just double check on that. Sure. So it was approved by the board in June of 2018, but you're saying it's been looked at since then. 
I, I believe it has, but let, let me just double check on that. OK, thank you. You're very welcome. Dad. Board members, any more questions? Hearing none, uh, we will proceed to the next contract. Mr. Saris, please proceed with presenting. OK, uh, the next item CWA 116-21. International Business Mach Machines, Cognos, SPSS Modeler, and Cloud Host. This is a new cooperative contract to provide IBM Cognos software and cloud hosting for the Department of Research and Data Analytics. Approval is requested for a four-year, eight-month contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $2 million. Thank you, Mr. Saris. Ms. Hen, please proceed with your question. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Um, Mr. Saris, do you have the breakdown of anticipated expenditures by program licenses and hosting or the hosting portion of the annual expenditures? Um, I do not uh, and wonder if Dr. Wheatley Phillip or one of her staff might have that information. So good afternoon and thank you so much for the question. Um, we have with us a program manager who is Ms. Kim Sanner and she has shared with us information regarding the breakdown. What we did with this particular contract and looking at the $2 million is really spreading it out over five years and anticipating mm -hmm. the additional cost that would be included as part of that. So when you think about this contract, it's not just one particular product and service. It really looks at a host of products and services which include the use of SPSS as well as costs to host in the cloud, server costs, security data storage costs, SPSS along with the estimated um, expected increases. So in terms of your question, um, Ms. Han will ask Ms. Sander if she could provide that breakdown for us at this time. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Um, my name is Kim Sanner and um, yeah, we have broken down the contract um, into five year uh, cost. And as uh, Dr. Wheatley Phillips has mentioned, the cost includes um, a number of different options. And this, up, uh, this new contract actually opens up a whole host of cloud services that are available to us with upgrading the um, contract to the new federal GSA contract. And so the pricing now, at the original pricing that we've been paying for the Cognos product and SPSS was solely based on license cost and the number of users using the, the licensing because the servers and all the infrastructure was hosted on the BCPS on site on premises. And so now as part of this contract, we are now looking at the different cloud services that are available. And um, so the $2 million includes over the next five years, not only the licensing costs that we've been incurring to allow our users to access these products, but also the cost for the data warehouse servers to be hosted in, in the cloud, um, the Cognos servers to be hosted um, offsite in the cloud. And with that comes a whole host of other servers that are required that all kind of talk to one another that are included in that price including charges for storing files on their servers and um, securing their their servers to allow our people to get into those servers and then um, there's some nominal charges for data that moves in, in and out of their environment. I'm not sure if that answers the question. It, it answers my initial question. Thank you. So our current expenditures on the contract that this is replacing just for licenses um, the average annual expenditures are 84,000 a year. Under this contract, those jump to 428,000 and change a year for a difference of 344,005 per year. So is it fair to say that that 344,000 per year is cloud infrastructure or does that include any other services or products? That's correct. It's mostly cloud infrastructure where we originally didn't have that cost because we hosted it all on um, premise at, premises at BCPS. Sure. Do we know what our on-premise cost is or the equivalent? Um, that might be a question we would have to ask DOIT. We don't have the breakdown of the cost for the infrastructure at BCPS. That would be something we could get back to you on what that cost was. 
So was a, a cost analysis performed when this um, move was considered to the cloud to understand what our increased costs are? I mean, that's a myth with cloud hosting that it's going to be cheaper. We know it's not, but what is the, the difference or from moving to cloud hosting or what do we hope to um, gain through this move? Do we know what the true additional cost is over what our internal costs are now to host ourselves? Um, I don't know that we know the exact cost right now. I mean, that would be something that we could go back and, and look at that cost um, and analyze it. But at be, due to the ransomware attack, the servers that um, had hosted our environment is, is currently still down. And so we're evaluating with um, in conjunction with the OIT, all of the possible solutions. And so in um, just keeping our options open to be able to um, move to the IBM cloud, we wanted to make sure that we included the mo enough money for the cloud services through IBM as well. Um, but we do not have a cost breakdown of what it would be to host on uh, BCPS at this time. Okay, thank you. And, and do those cloud services include anything beyond hosting um, in, in terms of support? Yeah, so it, it, it includes um, it includes the licensing costs for all the products. It includes the server costs, which there's um, multiple servers involved in that environment. Um, again, for storage, for the warehouse, for the Cognos environment. Um, and then there's also costs, um, which are called managed services costs, mm -hmm. which is for the IBM team that actually monitors the environment um, and, and uh, that we have somebody to escalate uh, support calls to. And so that's, that's also included in this estimate. Wonderful, but you don't have the, the itemized breakdown. I'm particularly interested in that managed services because that's something we're currently not um, receiving. So in, in looking at the justification for this added expense, that would be, it sounds like the the biggest benefit to this or, or what we stand to gain. Do you, do you happen to know if that's priced? So they the gave us, they gave us um, block of hour pricing. So basically they, they give, tell us from this many hours to this many hours, they charge a per hour rate. And so they couldn't give us a definitive answer until we've, made definitive decisions about exactly which pieces of the cloud we're going to purchase and, and the exact level of support. Um, so they do charge 100 to 200 hours per hour, depending on the number of blocks of hours that you need to purchase for them to monitor the environment. So when we did the estimate, we included the, up, the upward um, number of hours as part of the estimate just to be safe that we would have enough hours to support our new environment. Okay, great. So that You answered my next question, was, which was whether this included those hours of support. So it yes. does. Okay, thank you. Um, Leslie, are there any other additional licenses, products, or services that we are currently not purchasing that haven't been mentioned included in this award? Was that question directed to me? I'm sorry, you said Leslie. No, I, I asked if there were any other products or services that haven't been mentioned that are included in this contract award. No, it's just the cloud services uh, for IBM Cognos, the licensing for Cognos, and then the SPSS licensing, and the, the, all the cloud infrastructure components that go with the cloud services. Okay, great. And my final question, and I, I don't know if you have this information or maybe someone else um, does on staff. Do we know how many staff members um, currently hold Cognos certifications, whether as authors or administrators? Um, as far as you mean being certified and how to use the tool? Correct. So the, uh, so the team in uh, data analytics that's under uh, Dr. Wheatley Phillips have been received training through a vendor on how to use the tool. I, I couldn't say whether they've been certified or not, but we have been using the, the tool has been in place since 2003. So there are a good number of team members um, on staff that are very experienced in administering that server and uh, the tool set. 
Thank you. Is there anyone else on the call that might be able to answer my question about certifications? Hi, Ms. Hen. So this is Dr. Wheatley Philip. To the best of our knowledge, I'm not sure that we have staff that are certified in the use of Cognos. I know that we have staff that have attended the training. We have staff that we call them, um, we call them, um, those of us that aren't familiar with data, we call ourselves data toddlers. These are certainly data, data graduates in terms of the understanding of the use of data. So I'd have to get back with you in terms of the certification pieces regarding Cognos. I know that we have staff that are very proficient in the use of Cognos and they have been using it as Ms. Sanner shared since 2003. Thank you. My, my concern is with an investment that's this sizable that we provide our staff with appropriate professional development to make sure that we're using the tools as fully and as capably as we possibly can and ensuring that staff have that. If that were a service that's offered um, by through IBM or through another contract award, I want to ensure that our, our staff have the tools they need to make full use of the, the technology we're purchasing for them. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing that. And we'll look into that. And certainly there is a benefit in continued learning um, to make sure that our staff are most equipped with the knowledge and understanding to use a product of this, this, this magnitude. So thank you so much for that. We'll look into that for sure. Thank you. And if there is any learning curve moving to the cloud environment, I would want to ensure that staff have the, the appropriate professional development they need to make this a smooth and seamless transition for them. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Joes. Thank you, Ms. Hen. Mr. Kuhn. Thank you. So I have questions about cloud hosting in general. My understanding is we've just spent a significant sum of money to stand up and host a number of our applications on, I believe it's a CWG or Someone can correct me. Um, C CGI. CGI. All right. Thanks. Um, so my my first question is, why are we not putting this software and having it hosted in an environment we're already paying for? So I I understand that question. I think Ms. Sander is best to explain it in terms of the delivery of services we provide in terms of Cognos because oftentimes we don't have systems that speak to each other and sometimes you have to um, purchase individual services to enable that. Um, our team has a whole visual in terms of how we pull data into the data warehousing and, and use that. So the question you're asking is why aren't we using existing service that we have now? And so what I'd like to do is ask Ms. Sander to explain how we are unique um, in the data analytics team in terms of how we use data and what we need to be able to provide those services and supports to schools. Yeah, so, you know, with bringing our environment back up um, and getting it up and running again, there, there's obviously a whole host of options that are available to us to bring it that to bring it back up to our users that we've been investigating and analyzing. Um, Putting it on the IBM cloud um, gives us some advantages because it, it, they're already set up and have the infrastructure in place and know how to utilize those tools, including included in the, the cost for the cloud services includes the setup of the environment, the training of our staff to get the environment up and running. They understand how the servers need to speak to one another. Um, Deal at trying to get another vendor to host another vendor's uh, software can also be difficult and, and dealing with the, the agreements between those multiple vendors also delays the time in us being able to get the much needed data out to central office and school-based staff. Um, so IBM is, is, the, is clear um, in understanding our needs and our environment and being able to get us up uh, quickly. There are other options um, that we have been talking through um, in addition with the OIT around um, potentially hosting some pieces on some environments that are already stood up in order to save money um, and hosting other pieces with, within the IBM. And so we've had a lot of collaborative discussions between the IBM vendor and DOIT about what's the best place for which servers to go and um, you know whether we can 
obviously there's a lot of decisions around performance and things and how long it takes people to access data and things like that. And so I, I think we're still working through the final decisions. And so IBM brings to us, you know, because they have the experience and the infrastructure already set up, they bring us the quickest um, solution available with the most experience and then dealing with the OIT to be able to, to look at other options to save costs is also on our purview to, to investigate. So, so all of those decisions about all, there's a lot of moving pieces have not all been solidified at this point. We're still in the rebuilding phase. Okay, so here's the thing. Servers are commodities and software and any cloud service, <laughs> you know, you always get a variety of what type of servers you want and and the size and the horsepower. And if you want to build them vertically or horizontally, well, how much storage and what have you, it's all there. So my my concern is, you know, we're now going, we're 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 adding other cloud services. And and I, I'm fine with a managed service and, and I'm just asking the question, right? We we made a significant investment. In CGI, I think the the amount was like nine million dollars or something like that. That's a lot of money, and there's another two million to stand something else up somewhere else and pay people to monitor and manage that. When we're paying people to monitor and manage the cloud that we already that we already have at CGI, so I'm I would challenge your team to take a closer look at that to see if there's a way to save any any money on that because this is a significant spend. I understand what it is you're trying to do. Um, I, I just believe that, you know, servers and CPUs are commodity. You know, the real add, you know, the value that I'm hearing about this is the IBM insight and service that they're providing you, but it isn't really clear as to what, what, else, what they're doing for you. So, so Mr. Kuhn, thank you so much. And we certainly, um, as part of Team BCPS, never want to bring forward to the board uh, a request to use public funds in which it hasn't been well thought through. Our team truly, um, when you think about the ransomware attack and just having the table wiped clean and just struggling to come together to provide the services that we have provided, when we think about the use of Cognos, I mean, it really provides all of what schools and what offices are used to in terms of essentials data to help schools make informed decisions. Um, when we think about our assessment results, we think about attendance, suspension, student enrollment, monitoring of our students who are English learners, course enrollment, course performance, graduation, Thrive, teacher metrics, MSDE the projections that they have for ESSA, stakeholder survey results, transportation, the dashboards that schools rely on to give them real-time data. All of those pieces are were, were part of what we thought about in terms of the decision-making. So I certainly understand and I hear you in terms of so, um, servers come a dime a dozen, but I, I, what I will share with you, sir, is that our team did not take bringing this request lightly. We did spend a lot of time taking a look at what services there are, that IBM provides, what services we already have, how do we work to regain and rebuild what we had? Because we have schools right now that are struggling with decisions, looking at data and wanting to have the information to make those decisions for over 111,000 students. And our role is to really be able to be that conduit in terms of bringing in the data, providing it and presenting it in a manner so that they are able to see it, use it, and make it real in terms of their decision making. So this is not something that we just start lightly, let's just take it to the board. We really did spend a lot of time looking into this and looking at the benefits that it would provide um, for not just schools, but also our offices. Did you consider other packages besides IBM Cognos and SPSS? I think because this is a cooperative contract is the reason why we wanted to really move forward with a request to have a contract that we had been using. The team is familiar with it. Um, IBM has an ongoing relationship um, with schools as well as with um, BCPS. And so for us, it wasn't just looking at who else has a price, but looking at the services and the quality of services that would be provided. 
Thank you, Dr. Uh, Philip. Um, it is almost five o'clock. We have a closed session. I would like to advise committee members that when you look at these contracts, which are put ahead and of time, please send uh, emails, questions, and I have submitted questions to Mr. Saras and uh, Mr. Dixit in advance for a lot of the questions which were answered in emails. Uh, so please do that moving forward. Um, and with that, Mr. Saras, are there any other questions? We would like to proceed to the next contract, please. Uh, thank you. The next contract is 3-341-02, Document Management System and System Support. Uh, this is a contract modification to provide for the continued use of electronic document management solutions for accounts payable processing. There is one award bidder on the original contract approved by the board in January in June 2002. Uh, and I'll just mention that we have lined up a renewed uh, and replacement product for document management, which which is designed to expand uh, document imaging beyond uh, the the areas of accounts payable um, and human resources that we currently use it for and and bring it to all users throughout the system. That project was is part of our CGI upgrade uh, that was uh, begun two years ago and the first phase of which was completed last year but it has been the transition to the enhanced product has been placed on hold uh, due to the resources we've had to redirect to uh, ransomware recovery and so uh, in that uh, in that light we're simply requesting that we continue this contract uh, and uh, and make that transition to the replacement provider at some later date. Thank you, Mr. Sarah's board committee members. Any questions? Mr. Uh, go ahead, question. Mr. Q. Yeah, um, Mr. Sarah's just a quick question. Since this is being delayed due to the ransomware attack, are we going to submit this amount of money to be covered by our insurer? Well, we uh, the I had not planned on it because I'm not sure the replacement cost would have been greater. Um, and so in that sense, we're we're saving money over what we planned. Um, we're just not being able to take advantage of additional services. So it wasn't clear to me that this would be uh, eligible in terms of damages. All right, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Kuhn. Uh, Mr. Saris, please proceed with the next contract. Thank you. OK, the next item is uh, CWA 114-21 Student Information Systems. This is a new cooperative contract to provide a student information system or SIS for BCPS to be managed by the Department of Information Technology. Approval is requested for a four year, three month contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $4 million. Committee members, any questions? Uh, I have a question. Go ahead, Mr. Kuhn. Thank you. I just want to clarify that this is this is a, a cloud based activity, right? It says cloud Correct. hosting, right? So this Correct. is another another provider outside of our CGI cloud that's going to provide this directly to us. Correct. And uh, this this cost is included um, in our uh, damage. Damages uh, related to um, the ransomware attack and uh, Mr. Korn may want to comment on uh, 
the the server the cost avoidance that he's identified that will actually pay for these for this new server. OK, and you know, as we drive further into the cloud, um, one of the concerns, I mean, you're you're central to this, you're you're churning out these contracts and I just want to make sure that built into the cloud hosting, um, there is, you know, levels of security provided and other support that's available to BCPS. Are they, do you have like a boilerplate type of a contract to make sure that all of the things we need are there and provided by each, each provider? So the list of, yeah, the list of services uh, are, are in the contract and the licensing agreement. And um, I'll just defer to Mr. Corns if he has any details that he's able to share. Sure thing, Mr. Saris. Uh, Mr. Kuhn, thank you for your question. We, um, we do have a boilerplate language um, around um, student data privacy, around uh, the methodologies by which vendors will store data, um, both uh, at rest and in transit, as well as uh, audits and, um, and um, other uh, services that uh, vendors would procure in order to do uh, security testing. Um, this service um, through uh, this product focus, we've actually been utilizing their scheduling software for a number of years. I believe it's three. Uh, I, I don't want to uh, say that direct uh, in, in error. It's two to three years um, where we've been providing them data and, and uh, utilizing their service to schedule students. Um, so this this service of, of SIS, we've been using their software as a service platform for um, at least uh, two and a half years. Thank you, Mr. Corns. Ms. Hen, do you have any questions? Thank you, Ms. Jones. Um, in the interest of time, I think I'm going to um, suspend my questions because they have to do with details um, in the contract that the board or that the committee is not privy to. And rather than hash out those details, I'd like to make a motion at this time. I move that the Building and Contracts Committee request that all contracts be uploaded to board docs at the time of publishing the agenda for each board meeting where contracts are included. Is there a second? Second, Kuhn. Thank you, Mr. Kuhn. Um, Mr. Sayers, if you could address this. My understanding is it is uploaded. When are the contracts uploaded? Because I had a couple of board members send me questions which I forwarded to you and you answered them in a very quick prompt manner. Um, so I think this question has come up before and Ms. Hen may correct me, but I believe that she is referring to the actual uh, contract document, not the board exhibit. And that those contract documents do not exist at the time these items are presented to the board. Once a, a, an exhibit is approved, then we move into the contract negotiating phase. Uh, our law office and counsel for the other party is, invo is involved and uh, it sometimes takes months for those details to be resolved and at which time they are presented to the board chair and the superintendent for signature. So we, we would not have those documents ready at the time of the contract exhibits, and we don't believe it would be efficient to expend the resources and the time ahead of board approval in the event that a contract is not approved and we've spent legal and consulting time to, to negotiate the actual details. And that was my concern with the procurement laws of what you could reveal ahead of uh, awarding the contract. Uh, Ms. Hen, you were the chair of the building and contracts for two years prior to this. Is this something you had requested previously 
Is this a repeat request? I just trying to get the history and you could speak to your motion. I would like to speak to my motion. So there are details that are being shared with the committee. Mr. Sarris referred to it as details that are in the contract. I'm not sure what document he was referring to, but that those details are not shared on the exhibit with the committee. I previously made recommendations which the committee approved for additions to the contract exhibits which we received. That information is very helpful. However, it does not include details that are being requested through um, this committee when we ask about these contracts that have, should we have those documents as background, it could one, make our meetings shorter, but also avoid some of the back and forth. Um, for instance, I won't be voting on this contract because I don't understand um, all of the details, what it includes, similarly to another contract that's been discussed. So without that information, my motion is intended to inform board members and provide all of the information that we need, as well as that the public needs for full transparency to be able to do our due diligence. So I, right. Thank in you. that case, I, I call the question. Um, Ms. Slate, please proceed with the, the vote, roll call vote. Susan, your mic's not on. Thank Ms. Hen, also, could you write your um, motion on the chat? Because I, I have not stated it, so it really the motion is not on the floor yet. Yes, I will. Shall I wait while she types the motion, Ms. Joes? Yes, because I have to state it before it's considered a um, um, proper motion of the assembly. The chair has to state it. And um, while you're writing that, Ms. Hen, I also would like to point out that you have not reached out to me in the past two months if you had concerns about receiving documents. Um, I have heard from board members that I've had questions and I have reached out to staff members and they have responded in like, but I'm also a bit wary about your motion because of procurement laws that um, take effect when you're negotiating. So um, with that said, I would like to facilitate as much documentation between the board and uh, the committee, but uh, we have to take into account that there are certain things that cannot be uh, explicit, revealed uh, far too in advance. And uh, doc, Mr. Scri Dr. Scriven, if you want to go ahead and jump in. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I guess I need to see the motion as well. I, I just want to make sure that it's actually a motion that we can meet. And, and right now, uh, in the in the in the moment, I'm not sure even if it's an emotion that we can honor. So I, I just have reservation uh, due to that. Um, we're more than willing to work on continuing to amend the exhibit if need be. Um, but I feel Mr. Saris gave some very valid points as to why uh, this could 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 pose some uh, some issues and concerns. So thank you. All right. Mr. McMillan, did you have any questions? No, thank you. OK, um, I'm looking at this motion. Um, my concern is since I do contracts is putting in draft documents that have not been approved might open us up to possible uh, litigation if that contract is not. So I would really like to get some research into it, get legal's opinion before I uh, say this motion. So I am. I'm not sure if if Ms. Um, Howie is here because I really would like to wait on putting this motion on the floor. But Ms. Hen's question is that she would like to move all draft documents to be uplo uploaded to board docs prior to board approval. And um, I did call the question. So all right, so order. There is no point of order. I have to state the motion for it to be on the floor to be voted on. Until I state it, there is no motion on the floor. With that said, Ms. Slate, please proceed with the votes. Yes, Ms. Hen. Ms. Jones, did you restate the motion? Yes, I stated it. Yes. Mr. Kuhn. Yes. Mr. McMillian. No. Mr. Offerman. No. Ms. Jose. No. Favor two, 
Uh, opposed three, motion fails. Mr. Saras, please move on to the next contract. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the uh, next item is JMI 624-16, Service Desk Software Solution. Uh, this contract modification will provide for the continued maintenance of the Service Desk Software Solution for the Department of Information Technology. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $500,000, or excuse me, $520,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $2.38 million with one awarded vendor approved by the board in July 2016. Thank you, Mr. Sarris. Committee members, any questions? I have one, Ms. Joes. Go ahead, Ms. Han. Thank you. Is this a cloud solution? Um, I'd like no, Mr. it is not, Mr. Sarris. To answer that, please. It, it is. It is not a cloud-hosted solution. Thank you, Mr. Corn. So this is a, the same solution that was in place prior to the ransomware attack. Yes, ma'am. The ShareWell product is the uh, underpinning of BCPS Serve. So can can you speak to the with in as much detail as you're you're comfortable with sharing the recovery of this versus other um, products? Uh, so okay. as with. As with our, our recovery efforts, we have uh, put a predominance on uh, core services that directly impacted students uh, and uh, financial. So this is on our uh, recovery process, um, soon to be stood up um, with uh, data to be rehydrated into it. Um, it is inside of um, uh, inside of our server farm. Uh, so our VMwares are, are fairly easy to reestablish with it. Um, it is on our map, our temporary uh, help desk solution still being in place uh, as this this uh, product did not bubble up to the uh, immediate needs that others did in the totality of BCPS's need. Thank you. I understand that county government offered use of their cloud-based service desk tool. Was that something that was evaluated? Uh, we actually took advantage of um, the offering that the, the county government put to us, uh, but the offer was for their um, uh, their dial-in help desk. Uh, so they provided us with phone numbers and uh, roll queues uh, for our, our help desk service of that nature. Thank you for clarifying. It was my understanding that they also offered use of a service desk um, solution, so that, that would be inaccurate. Uh, not in any of the meetings I was in, Ms. Hen. Um, we, uh, we settled in very quickly that we needed a phone system and that the uh, help desk system uh, was one that we had put in place through SharePoint, but uh, it is, it's a temporary. Okay, thank you. And did we consider any um, other cloud-based solutions in, in evaluating this recommendation? Uh, not for this one. Uh, the um, we own all of the licenses for this already, this uh, maintenance and um, uh, it's uh, programmatic work if if needed, um, but we already have the licenses in hand. So um, to kind of step away from those would have been uh, cost prohibitive. Sure, so, and we, we continue to plan to host um, this on-premise. It's a very low risk server uh, environment uh, that drives this. So yes, we would. Thank you, Mr. Corns. And in the interest of time, Ms. Hen, you should have sent all of these questions in advance. Again, you have been board committee chair for two I years. So um, I would be admonished to you before. sending those in advance. Um, given Mr. Coons' uh, question to adjourn, Mr. Saris, could you move on to the next contract and then we can um, proceed to adjourn the meeting. Yes, uh, the next item MBU 520-16 food products, commercial and commodity. This contract modification will provide for the continued purchase of food products. For the Office of Food and Nutrition Services approval is requested to extend the contract for one year and increase contract spending authority by $4.4 million 
bringing revised total contract spending authority to $53.9 million with 29 awarded vendors approved by the board in May 2016. Committee members, any questions? There being no further questions, Mr. Saris, please proceed to the next contract. The uh, next item is the purchase of new school buses. This is a new competitively bid contract, excuse me, JME 516-21, purchase of new school buses for the record. This is a new competitively bid contract for the purchase of new school buses by the Office of Transportation. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with two recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $40 million. Thank you, Mr. Saris. I think um, board members, any questions? I know there, there's a whole lot of questions on this one. Um, Mr. McMillian? No, thank you. Okay, there being no further questions, I did have a bunch of questions, but I will, um, they were answered in an email. However, I would state them in the open session as well, just so that board members are aware since this is a large contract and I had received additional contracts from um, questions from other board members as well. So hearing none, Mr. Mc, Mr. Mr. Was, this is Mr. Kuhn. Go ahead. I, I do have questions. Um, my first question is if, if there were questions shared via email, I must have missed them because I don't have any of those answers or questions in front of me, and that would be useful uh, going forward, um, perhaps to limit some of these questions. Um, yes, I will forward you those answers. Great. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Saris, I'm guessing there's a reason for the mix of different types of buses here. Can you explain what what that mix is and who makes this decision and why we're getting multiple different sizes and what have you. Well, that recommendation, uh, broadly speaking, is based on the 12 year replacement cycle. So uh, any of these buses, regardless of their passenger capacity and their e being equipped with uh, hydraulic lifts um, are uh, generally replaced, they're required to be replaced on a 12 year cycle. The composition of the fleet is determined based on the needs so that in some cases uh, we might not feel the need to purchase any more 64 passenger buses uh, and shift instead to 76 passenger buses, which was done in the last few years to improve efficiencies. So um, the if if Mr. Patillo or Dr. Grimm would like to add any information uh, to the basic replacement nature of, of this of these uh the fleet composition that's a, mr Saris, that's fine I, I i i just want to make sure that this is just simply replacement of buses is this isn't any kind of growth in new buses or expansion of our fleet is this just simply replacement that's correct that is correct mr coon it is replacement and it's actually fewer than the number that are scheduled to be replace this year. What uh, is it because we just haven't been using buses because of the pandemic? No, sir. It's because we're um, working through right sizing our fleet to make sure that the number of buses that we purchase each year is consistent and that our replacements aren't widely variable uh, from year to year. The number, as Mr. Saris indicated, is based on the type of service that we provide. In some of the, our neighborhoods in Baltimore County, for example, we can't utilize our 76 passenger buses, so we need to stick with the standard 64. Um, we have the, the smaller buses are for students with disabilities and the number of wheelchairs that we can transport, for example, are, are based on those buses and, and the design of them. All right, thank you. You're welcome. 
Board members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Sears, please proceed to the next contract. Yes, the next item, CWA-111-21, purchase of various motor vehicles. This is a new competitively bid contract for the purchase of various motor vehicles for the Department of Facilities Management and Strategic Planning and Offices of Transportation and Career Technical career and technical education and fine arts. Approval is requested for a one-year contract with three recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $2.7 million. Thank you, Mr. Sears. Um, any questions, committee members? There being no further questions. I, I uh, have a question, Ms. Ms. Chos. Go ahead, Ms. Q. So I'm, I'm looking at the description, Mr. Sarris, and <clears throat> my understanding is you, this is for replacement of various vehicles. Um, and then I see in here there's a line for an allowance of $250,000 more um, to as some kind of a set aside to replace vehicles that possibly may break down and or are damaged. Um, that's correct. So is that, is that normal? Uh, that's something that we have. Uh, we just started doing last year and what we found was that even in a case where a vehicle is totaled, for instance, as a result of a collision, uh, if we don't have the spending authority, uh, to proceed, we cannot even take the insurance proceeds and and make another purchase. So we wanted, in addition to the criteria that we build into the original uh, replacement cycle, uh, we wanted to create exactly as you said an allowance for unanticipated events that occur during the course of the year, so that we can continue to keep the fleet on the road. So that's that's a 10% about a 10% allowance there. It's just it seems like a lot of money to just keep there. Is this because we have his historical precedent that we're we're damaging and replacing $250,000 worth of vehicles a year? No, we don't have that. Um, but any you know a uh, a 10 ton a 10 ton dump truck that is used for plowing snow, uh, if that were to fail uh, and couldn't be economically repaired, it could very well cost that amount of money. So it is, uh, it is an estimate to ensure that we don't have to wait an entire year uh, to advertise and bid and uh, replace a vehicle that that might take eight to 12 months. But Mr. Saris, I guess my, my question is you you constantly bring contracts to us with modifications and two hundred fifty thousand dollars, you know, covers like a whole cohort, a four year cohort or at least one year of it. Right. So my my question to you is you can modify this contract at any time. I mean, would it, wouldn't that be something that you would just normally do? I mean, well, if this happens uh, at Thanksgiving and we have one less 10 ton truck to plow snow, it's going to be tough to get it to the board and get it approved in time to get a vehicle on the road before the end of the snow season. So that's my reasoning. And if the board wishes to amend that, uh, I suggest that they do so. Mr. Kuhn, if I may also address your question, this gives us the flexibility to purchase a replacement vehicle, as Mr. Sarah said, more quickly and expeditiously than costly repairs that have been the practice um, of the Office of Transportation to invest in replacing a vehicle. So for example, if, if it's not even a, a 10 ton dump truck that costs $160,000, if it's a van or a box truck for IT, 
Um, we have an 18 month lead time to replace those vehicles uh, under our old system. By giving uh, the opportunity for the spend authority, we only have, um, we, we have the option of replacing those vehicles if there is um, a, a total insert, there's some other issue that requires their replacement. Um, to, to give you some idea, we do have about five vehicles per year in our fleet of about 450 that are totaled each, each year. And those range, for, they could be anything from an SUV to a dump truck, um, to a pickup truck, to a van or, or any other type of vehicle. This gives us the flexibility to be able to replace that vehicle in less than 18 months amount of time, or it gives us the flexibility to replace it so we're not sinking thousands of dollars into a vehicle that is several years old or uh, that has other maintenance problems. Thank you, Mr. Grimm. Um, with that, board members, since we are already um, an hour and a half into this, I will um, make a motion now to recommend that items 1 through 15 be moved to the full board for approval. Uh, the question is on the re recommended approval of contracts 1 through 15. Second, Offerman. Would you please separate 9 through 12? Ms. Hen, the motion is already on the floor. Uh, it's been seconded and I have stated it, so we're going to process it. You could separate it out in the full assembly. Ms. Slade, could you please take a roll call vote? Ms. Jones, as a courtesy, members that request to separate agenda items are given that courtesy. Ms. Hen, we have contract 16 to 24 that this committee has not processed and that has to be processed in the full assembly. You guys had a multitude of questions which should have been pre and you have been chair. Let me remind you again off the committee. This is a personal. Uh, so I will separate it out as a courtesy. What do you want separated out? Please put it on the chat. I can't read your mind. Nine through 12 as stated. Nine through 12. All right, so I'm going to move that. Items one through eight and. 13 to 15 be moved to the full board for approval. Is that right, Ms. Hen? You wanted 9 through 12 separated out? Yes. Correct? Thank you. Yes, please. All right. So the motion is that items 1 through 8 and 13 to 15 be moved to the full board for approval. Do I have a second? I think Ms. Second Offerman. Ms. Slate, could you take a roll call vote, please? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes, please. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Ms. Jose? Yes. That motion passes unanimously. Contracts 1 through 8 and 13 to 15 will be moved to the full board for approval. I will now entertain a motion to recommend that contracts 9, um, 9 through 12 be moved to the full board for approval. So I moved, Offerman. Thank you, Mr. Offerman. Do I have a second? Yes, please. Rod Thank McMillian. you, Mr. McMillian. Uh, Ms. Slade, please take a roll call vote. Yes. Ms. Hen? No. Mr. Kuhn? No. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Mr. Offerman. Yes. Ms. Jones. Yes. Favor is three. Uh, opposed two. Um, contracts nine through 12 will be moved to the full board for approval. Since this committee could not process the remaining contracts, they will now be going to the full assembly for approval contract six. 16 through 24. Those are mostly capital projects. Um, Mr. Dixit, I apologize. Um, apologize to you, Mr. Saris, as well. And I will, Ms. Uh, Howie, do I have to make a motion to move that to the full committee or can I just adjourn the meeting? I'm not sure how to process that since we did not review. Uh, Madam Chair, I think it's possible that these items would just go to the full board without a recommendation from the committee. Okay, 
All right, so that's what we'll do. And in the interest of time, since we are running late for closed session, um, I'm going to ask that the meeting be adjourned. But prior to that, I would like to state that uh, due to the conflict in timing of the building and contracts with the um, closed session, the building and contracts meeting in May will be held at an earlier time and Ms. Gober will be sending out uh, an email to confirm that. Uh, Ms. Hen, what is your motion? Yes, Ms. Jones, I move that the remaining contracts be tabled until the next building and contracts meeting. Um, Ms. Ter Dixit, these are capital project contracts. I'm not sure uh, tabling them until May would be appropriate since some of them are roof replacement, pavement replacements, and our schools are in session. So um, could you please comment on that? Thank you, Mr. Joes. As you know that these capital projects, uh, we try to complete them during the summer break mm -hmm. and it will have significant impact if they are next sent to the next meeting. That means we will be unable to start the project uh, during the school closing time. So yes, uh, we would like to have them approved. If you give me 15 more minutes, I can share these contracts with you right now. Uh, is it possible for you just to share it with the full board? These are capital contracts. They're not that excessively complex. Um, my understanding is that there is no second on Ms. Hen's motion, so we'll just move the capital contracts to the full board. Ms. Uh, I believe a second is asked. I'm sorry, what? I, I didn't hear that um, a second was requested. Is there a second to Ms. Hen's motion of tabling the contracts 16 through 24. I'll second that. Thank you, Mr. Kuhn. Ms. Slade, please take a roll call vote. Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? No. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Mr. Offerman? Uh, one more time, Mr. Offerman. All right, and Ms. Jose. No. Um, so since we don't have uh, Mr. Offerman, it's the motion does not pass. So tabling of contracts does not pass. Therefore, I'm going to move all of the contracts 16 through 24 to the full board for approval. Uh, given the fact that Mr. Dixit just said that these are time sensitive contracts that have to be approved by the board, moving it to May is going to delay construction and some of them are roof replacements and pavement that is much needed for our school. So I would not recommend tabling this until May, but I would request a full assembly to go through these contracts and apologies, Mr. Dixit, I know that might run late, um, but if uh, that is OK. I would I'm going to make a motion to move it to the full board for approval. Um, committee members, don't they, any comments don't they automatically go now? Miss Miss Jones. Since we didn't uh, table them, they automatically move to the full. Correct. Board, right? Yes. OK, they will just move to the full board and we can discuss it um, and the assembly and hopefully get it approved so we're not delaying uh, time critical construction contracts which are mostly maintenance and small capital contracts that i looked looked through so all right so with that said uh, is there any further business because there is no further business this meeting is adjourned thank you very much for your patience thank you